verde sauce, hopefully. And I'm gonna do it a little lazy verde sauces and I'm not gonna make the verde sauce. <laughs> I can use it from a can. Um, but I will be making the burritos, obviously. And um, then we're gonna use that to make meal prep for a few nights dinner for two. And then um, I'm gonna take some of that also to make today's lunch, which will be a Mexican taco salad. So we're gonna make one thing that'll multi-purpose across a few things, which will be pretty good. Um, so that's the plan for today. Oh, my phone's going off. One second. this morning so I had to ask Dave about it. <laughs> the microphone I have in here, it runs on batteries on like one of my desk and um, I feel like they're going to be dying soon and so I was like, I better find out where the batteries are because if it dies, I have no way to get it back. <laughs> so I thought I better uh, pay attention to that. So hopefully now um, I won't have to worry about it because now I know where they are. Yay for batteries. <laughs> okay, let's get going, shall we? I'm excited to get some cooking done. I've been eating, um, doing vegan meal prep off stream for some YouTube videos I'm working on. And uh, I just did a vegan minestrone that turned out really good the other day, so I'm pretty excited about that. And uh, I'll be editing that video soon so you guys can learn to make them, but oh, it's so good. Nom nom nom. Okay, I got burrito shells. I really like this one. Um, Cabo Loco. It's probably really in the way, huh? Um, <laughs> well, they're not too bad in the way. They're just kind of in the way. Just kind of. But they're kind of pretty, right? <laughs> so, Cabo Loco. These are really good flour tortillas. And I usually eat corn as much as I can in tortillas because they don't have any sodium most often. Um, if you read the list. But these have no hydrogenated oil, which is great. And they're non GMO. And the sodium's really low, so like one tortilla is only 250 milligrams of sodium, which is really good for a flour tortilla. Flour tortillas tend to be really high in sodium, so always check your labels when buying these, because sometimes you'll get a flour tortilla and it'll have like 800 milligrams of sodium in just the shell. And you're supposed to shoot for about 500 milligrams of sodium per meal. So if you think about that, that's like a meal and a half worth of sodium without putting anything in your burrito. So if you go to a restaurant, be very careful. But these are really good ones for uh, low sodium, and they taste awesome. They're like really pliable and really good. And pretty awesome. Hey, Jenny, how are you? Hi, nice to see you today. We're gonna make some burritos and a big salad. And I'm just getting started, so let's get stuff out of the fridge, shall we? Um, what do I need? I need, I'm winging this today, so <laughs> mushrooms. issues yesterday that put me in a mood. I was trying to get my computer ready to stream yesterday and I couldn't get my party chat on the Xbox app to work on Windows 10 and it was saying my network was like Torito or I don't know, Toledo? I mean all I could think of was Fast and the Furious. 
their last name. <laughs> but anyway, it had some weird error. It was like a strict NAT, and the connection was blocked, and I couldn't get a party chat, and I couldn't figure it out, and I went through like an hour and a half of troubleshooting, and some friends of mine were helping from Team Power Up, and they couldn't figure it out, I couldn't figure it out. And I just got so frustrated. It gave me the biggest headache, and I still haven't fixed it. I, I don't know, Windows 10 app sucks. <laughs> so I can't use party chat on my streaming PC right now. I can only use Discord, which is fine because Discord's better, but, you know, I like to use party chat when I can just because lots of my friends are on there. But anyway, that's what I dealt with yesterday, and it gave me the biggest headache. So, yeah, I feel your pain. <laughs> it was terrible. All right, so we need a garbage bowl and a bowl to put stuff in. Garbage. Windows 10 does stink. Yeah. There's just some things about Windows 10 that's like, really? <laughs> really we're dealing with this right now? Oh. Sometimes. Tech issues, I think, for me, are the absolute worst. Like, I don't know what it is about technology, but when it doesn't work, oh, I just get so frustrated. <laughs> it's probably one of my biggest stressors is tech stuff. And I'm not the most tech savvy, but I'm not, like, the most stupid either. Or the stupidest. Most stupid? Stupidest? You know what I mean. <laughs> but, oh, so frustrating. Last night, uh, Daniel didn't get to take a look at it. We, um, we had our power going out at 10 o'clock last night, or 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock um, for construction at Amazon across the street. And so uh, we had no power from like 11 to 4, so we were kind of rushing around after he got home from work to try to get stuff done that we needed to do for the evening, like, you know, eat. <laughs> so we didn't get a look at it last night, but probably this weekend, see if I can fix it, because, wow, yeah, it was just so frustrating. So these are cremini mushrooms, and um, I'm just kind of wiping off any dirt they have on them. These are kind of dirty ones. Sometimes you don't need a wet rag, but today, you know, you can see they're a little dirty today. So I'm gonna just wipe them down. You don't wanna run cremini's or any mushrooms under the faucet or dunk them in water because mushrooms will soak up all the liquid that they're presented with. And so um, it's very important to not get a bunch of water in them or you'll have soggy mushrooms. And then when you cook them, they'll have a really weird texture. <laughs> and lots of people that say they don't like mushrooms, that's typically the problem is that they like wash them, wash them. And then when you cook them, they don't release enough moisture to actually get like browned and good, they end up like slimy, and no one likes slimy mushrooms. Yay, no power when it's cold. <laughs> well, luckily for us, um, it wasn't so cold. We actually run the air conditioner at night. <laughs> it's like 40 in the day here, but I like to sleep in really cold, and Daniel sleeps really hot, so I like to be, you know, cold from here up and really tucked in a bunch of covers. Like, I really like being all bundled. So I have like a bajillion blankets. <laughs> And Daniel barely sleeps with a sheet. <laughs> so uh, we run the AC at night to, to keep it cool in here or open a window or whatever. And um, so last night we, we froze ourselves out early so we wouldn't, you know, cook at night. So it's more a matter of us cooking, not freezing. It's actually raining here today. So if you can't get everybody buy mushrooms, buy creminis instead of white if it's available. Creminis are basically baby portobello's. But they are um, 300 times more vitamin D is in a brown mushroom versus a white one. And I think they have a little better flavor. Some people would argue with me on that, that, you know, white mushrooms have their place. But I really think anywhere you use a white mushroom, a cremini is just as good or if not better. So that's just me. So we're just going to cut the very ends off of all of these, the part that's kind of like gross and, you know, dirty. Because we're not really, we didn't really wash that bit. And some of them are pretty gnarly. So we're just going to cut that off, but we're not going to pull the stem out. You know, sometimes you can just like click the stem and whip it out, whip it out. <laughs> but we're not going to do that. We're just going to cut the end off and um, we're going to use all the mushroom here. Because this is going to be our, basically we're making like, how would I describe it? It's basically like having a ground meat, but instead it's going to be made up of ground rice to vegetables. So that's what we're going for today. And uh, since I'm meal prepping, I'm making quite a bit of it. And it's going to be mostly mushroom based and rice and cauliflower. 
All right, I'm going to get something to eat as well. Sounds good, Jenny, yeah. Do that, grab some snacks. But we're gonna basically chopping this up into like really tiny bits, super tiny. So it doesn't really have to be perfect because this is gonna be really rough anyway. We just kind of want to start breaking them up so that they're easier to just kind of chop at. So again, this doesn't have to be really science. <laughs> you just want them more pliable to work with and they're gonna all get kind of minced up anyway. And it's gonna look like a house worth of mushrooms, like way too many, but mushrooms actually cook down. So whenever you're cooking with mushrooms, you wanna actually prepare more than you think you'll need because they will cook down uh, when they release their moisture. And then you'll see that there's actually not as much as you thought and uh, it'll all work out just fine. So I'm not sure how many burritos this is going to end up making, but we're just going to make as many as it makes and make whatever it makes for lunch today. So, <laughs> I think I'm good now. <laughs> okay, so now we're just going to kind of go at, at them here. So you can see what I mean and then it doesn't have to be perfect. Just be very careful of your fingers when you're doing this. And um, you will want a really big cutting board because if you get out a little dinky one, you're going to have mushrooms rolling all over your kitchen. And your cat or your dog's going to be like, ooh, snacks. And you're going to be like, no, I don't need the mushrooms. So <laughs> get a decent cutting board. Or you're going to have them in your boots. Did I tell you last time I streamed? So I wear Ugg boots when I stream because I like having the extra cushion on my feet in the kitchen and I get cold easily. So um, anyway, uh, these ones were, my pants were tucked into them. I was wearing yoga pants, I think, last time I streamed. And my pants were tucked into these because they're like a little above ankle height. And uh, I dropped a piece of corn during the stream and I couldn't find it on the floor. I was like, well, okay, because my rug on in the kitchen is pretty, um, pretty colorful, one would say. And so <laughs> it's, it's like a Persian rug and it's got a crazy pattern on it. So you can't really find stuff if you drop it, which is the beauty about having it in the kitchen because if you drop something, it's not a big deal. You're like, oh, well, whatever. Or if you spill something on it, oh, well, whatever. That's kind of why we got it. <laughs> but I couldn't find this piece of corn. So I figure I'll find it later. Turns out after I got done streaming and I went and laid down and took off my boots or my slippers that, um, yeah, it was in my shoe. <laughs> so <laughs> it went right in the top of my boot. So yeah, you could end up with mushrooms in your shoes today if you didn't have a big enough board. So this is going to seem like some crazy chopping, but we got to do a lot of it. And you just kind of want to keep pushing them back into the pile and getting them off your knife because see, you'll get like big giant chunks of ones stuck to it. So just keep going. Just keep chopping. This is a really good um, filling for burritos or enchiladas or tacos or salad or tostadas. Pretty much anything Mexican. You could also do like a Mexican spaghetti, I suppose. so fluffy. They feel really fluffy. Like if you laid on a bed of mushrooms, probably pretty comfortable. <laughs> Since I sneeze, now my nose itches. Don't you hate that? So we want these fairly small and fairly similar. So we're just going to kind of keep going. If you had like a rocker, like a pizza rocker, which I do, I should have used that. This would probably be really good for this to make the short work of it. Probably should have used it instead of the knife. But you want to make sure to break up any of the really big pieces for sure. So if you see them, smash them. So what's everybody doing today? How was everybody's weekend? I was hoping to talk to you guys on Tuesday, but I didn't get around to streaming. I didn't feel very well. So. Tuesday and just kind of was mellow. But it was my birthday this past week. On Monday, it was my birthday. So uh, this weekend we went out, or this past
past weekend, we went out to my sister's house, which I hadn't seen her house yet. She just bought a new place. And she lives across the Puget Sound from us, so we're in downtown Seattle and she's across the water. So the way to get out there is either take the ferry, or one of the ferries, and then the other way is to drive all the way down to Tacoma and take the long way around, <laughs> which is what we did. We decided to make a road trip out of it. I don't really like the idea of the ferry. I don't like being a slave to someone else's schedule. So I didn't want to sit in a ferry line for two hours, which was what the current wait time was. <laughs> so we decided to go take an Uber to the airport and then rent a car. So we got like a really cushy SUV for, you know, road tripping purposes. <laughs> and drove all the way to that there. And we drove past like the Naval Shipyards and stuff. This isn't just about where we want it. Naval Shipyards, which are really cool. And it was really pretty drive, especially since Seattle's been in like a fog for a while. Today it's not foggy. Today it's back to being rainy. But we were in the fog for like a week. So we got over to her side of the water and it was like blue sky and beautiful and it was gorgeous. And her new house is super cute. And it's very like her. It's a great choice for her. Very outdoorsy. And um, she lives like in the woods. It's pretty cool. She had kittens, which were adorable. She named them Pepita and Bonsai, which are like the cutest names I've ever heard for kittens. <laughs> but they were so adorable. They uh, were both white, and Pepita was the girl, their, bro their brother and sister. So this is good. Pepita is white, but she had like little brown markings on her. And then um, Bonsai is the boy. And he's much bigger than the girl. I guess he's been growing much faster. But um, he doesn't have any of the markings, so there's some way to at least tell them apart. But they're so cute. They just like snuggle with each other all day. So adorable. You know, kittens. They're like nine weeks old. <laughs> okay, mushrooms galore. I know, it looks ridiculous. Like a huge amount of mushrooms. Let's get these all in the pile here. Anyway, it was pretty fun seeing the kittens, visiting with her and her boyfriend. It was a nice time. She uh, cooked me dinner for my birthday, which was nice of her. And uh, she made me a vegan dinner, which I thought was pretty groovy, very thoughtful. So usually if you're, if you're vegan, it's really hard to eat out at someone else's house or eat out in general just because people don't make the same food as you. So like I go home for the holidays to see my family at like Thanksgiving or Christmas. And it's like, meat, 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 and more meat. <laughs> or something with cheese, or whatever. It's just like really one thing. I need to mute this, sorry. I'm right back, hang on. My computer just, I forgot to mute the volume on it. I'm coming. so it's really hard to eat out, but my sister made a vegan dinner. It was really nice. Hi, Jess. Hope your day is going well. It is. How's your day going? What are you up to? So yeah, she made a vegan dinner. She made something Indian, which I don't, you know, eat a lot of Indian food, so I thought that was pretty interesting. But she made like a, a lentil curry or something, I guess it was. It's really good. It had a butternut squash. What was it? Sweet potato. Sweet potato, pitas, cilantro. It was kind of like an Indian slash Mexican bowl of comforty goodness. <laughs> it was awesome. It tasted great. So that was cool. Did my bag just break or did I grab the wrong end? I grabbed the wrong end. So you have like a flat grating thing and a little container and they just snap together. And I have like three different kinds of graters and mandolins that are all the same thing, but a little different blades. So they do different things that snap onto this little contraption. And then it you know, has rubber feet so it stays pretty groovy. I'm a tad quiet. I have my mic turned all the way up. You might have to turn your volume up. It's um. I noticed it sounds pretty low. I'll go check it. Let me look.
Looks like it's set to 100%. Your stream is halfway up to the top. Yeah, I know. It's the microphone. It's like, it's right here. So it's as close as I can get it. I can't wear it like I was meant to be because if I wear it in the kitchen, I cut out if I pass this end of the counter and then it doesn't come back on always. So <laughs> I have to mount it. I had to mount it to my uh, camera arm, but maybe I'm just talking quiet today too. Yeah, I know you have to turn it like halfway or higher. Like usually if I listen to my VODs, it's like at 75%. I know it's bad. I wish it was better, but I'm not sure what to do about it at this point because I have my microphone turned up to 100%. I have uh, the volume levels are 100% on the recording. They're 100% OBS. So I don't know what I can do about it. And I think it is what it is at this point. So I'm probably going to use two carrots because these are pretty big. So I might not use this one. Thanks for letting me know. We're just going to wash these. Maybe headphones. Maybe I'm a, a headphone screen. Get your auditory meal cooking sounds on or something. Okay. Wash the carrots. I'm not going to peel them. A lot of the nutrition is in the skin of a carrot, so I don't like to peel them. I buy organic, um, but I wash them very well anyway. And uh, I'm going to cut off the very ends because those are gnarly bits we don't want to eat. So we're just going to shred. Or grate, I guess is the case maybe. And I'm probably going to end up with carrots all over my kitchen because every time I grate, they're everywhere. <laughs> this is probably pretty loud. <laughs> so you ended up getting one of those wearable mics, but the signal gets interrupted. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Um, yeah, it's a lapel mic, so it's clipped on to the wire on my micro or my camera right now. But yeah, you can put it on and you clip the thing in your pocket, you know, the receiver bit, and it's connected wirelessly to the computer, which is maybe like, I don't know, eight or nine feet away, um, 10 at most, I would say. And uh, yeah, so I wore it and it seemed to be working fine, but if I got past a certain point in my kitchen and cut out, even though it says it's like good for 300 meters or something, like it has a ridiculously high range, it doesn't work as advertised. So, <laughs> I don't know. It sucks, because I was hoping to be able to wear it so you'd have really good sound. That's what I was trying to solve. <laughs> I like my vegan burrito sweat. <laughs> hey, wet burritos are the bomb. <laughs> it's... It's also called smothered burritos, but if you go to like a traditional Mexican restaurant and you order a burrito, you can say, I'll have it wet, and they'll totally know what you mean. So you can get any burrito at a restaurant and say, I'll have it wet, and if you're at a real Mexican restaurant, they'll know what you're talking about. And it just means basically you want a sauce over it, so either that's a verde sauce or a like enchilada sauce, and usually they'll also put cheese over the top and melt the cheese. So you get hot sauce, melty cheese over the top of your burrito, and then it becomes a fork and knife situation versus a hand situation. So we eat a lot of wet burritos. Also gives you extra nutrition, and it also keeps the burrito moist. So, you know, I think a wet burrito is preferable to a plain burrito, but that's probably because I like making sauces. Like, I really like a lot of sauce um, things and experimenting with sauces. Today I'm not going to make one because I don't have tomatillos. There's no tomatillos at Whole Foods right now because they're not in season and they only carry stuff that's in season or good quality. And so you can go to Whole Foods and they'll be like, yeah, they didn't taste very good this week so we didn't buy them. So I can't buy them. <laughs> and uh, so there's no tomatillos at the store right now. And so my only option for a verde sauce is canned or jarred tomatillo sauce. And uh, so that's what we're working with today. So sadly, I won't be making the sauce, but normally I prefer to. Could be material that is preventing the signal. I wonder, because I, you know, the material wasn't over anything. Like, it was totally exposed. And I was just wearing, like, a cotton shirt the day I tested it. And I think I was wearing, like, workout clothes. So I was probably wearing yoga pants. So probably cotton, polyester, or something like that. I don't know what it was. I might only need one of these carrots. This is a fatty. If you get down to the bottom and you're scared, you're going to cut yourself, like I do. 
just don't worry about it. It's not worth losing your fingers over that end of the carrot. Yeah, my son likes his cheese sauce on top. Cheese sauce? I don't think I've had a cheese sauce, but I really don't like cheese. <laughs> and being vegan, I don't eat cheese anymore, but even when I wasn't, I didn't like cheese. Like, as a kid, I hated nacho cheese sauce. Like, oh my god, so gross. Nachos, you know, from like a basketball game or something, could not get me to touch the stuff. <laughs> Gross, man. Actually, that doesn't look like a whole lot of carrot, does it? Maybe it'll be one and a half. I was trying to get all these little bits and bobs. I'll do one and a half of the carrots. This guy back. One and a half. Yeah, web burritos are good. You can get them with all sorts of things. Sometimes they do mole sauces as well. So mole sauces tend to have like um, some sort of nut, often a peanut base or cinnamon in a mole and usually like a dark chili so it might have like a ancho chili or something like that and um, you can get crazy with it like you go to some places and they have a huge array of sauces you can choose from some places specialize in wet burritos so they have you know like try all our sauces and there's you know there is carrot all over my damn kitchen <laughs> try all our sauces and there will just be sauces for days and you're like overwhelmed by sauce choice <laughs> I prefer a red sauce myself. Yeah, I like both. It depends on the filling. So if you're doing like a, I kind of think if you're, okay, if you're non-vegan, I think like a white meat goes best with a green sauce and a beef goes best with a red. Or if you're doing vegan, I think it depends on what you have inside too. So if I'm doing like a bell pepper filling and like corn, I think a red sauce goes really well. But if I'm doing like a mushroom base, I like doing a green sauce. So today's mostly mushroom and cauliflower. And so I think today's definitely, I'm just gonna do this whole thing. <laughs> definitely a uh, carrot flying across the world. <laughs> definitely like a, a green sauce. Okay, this thing's full of the brim, so I'm done with the carrot. And my hands turning orange. I like carne asada tacos and then dip them in tomatillo sauce. Oh, I could see that being good. I could see that being good. What the heck was that that just popped up? Plus two Vitamix? I just saw something pop up and I don't know what it was. There's some Vitabit thing happening. Oh, I know what it is. Okay. Yeah, I turned on um, points. So if you look down below the stream, there's actually points now that you're earning, which you can redeem for things, and I hope to add more rewards soon. But um, I was just testing it out. It's one of the Twitch extensions, so now you're earning Vitabits as you watch. So I think you get two Vitabits every five minutes or something like that. And so the two Vitabits thing just popped up. Aha! I was wondering how that would work. Okay, my board has carrots all over the place. And um, I'm gonna just give this a quick rinse on my hands because I'm all orange. orange. Fun fact, this cutting board I also use for my nightstand. <laughs> we have we have three of these Bose blocks. Um, one the cats have in the bathroom for like a cat scratcher that sits on top of their cat box. So we don't have to look at the cat box for one. And because the cats like to sit on it. And then we have this one which I use as like my nightstand because I don't like hard wood because I don't like worrying about making noise at night. I like anal sticking, so I like a natural surface, and so does Daniel. So we have uh, both blocks on top of our nightstands, and I'm using mine also in the kitchen. <laughs> so I've been trying not to stain it because it's like a table in my bedroom when I'm done. So funny. <laughs> Fun fact. <laughs> Throw in some rice and cook it in the We are going to be using some salsa for this today, for the sauce, because we're making like a a mock meat sauce is what we're, we're kind of doing. So we're going to have some cauliflower too. I should probably get that out. I'm feeling lazy today, so we're not ricing it ourselves. I just bought frozen. This stuff's really good. I use this a lot. Frozen rice cauliflower. Pretty good stuff. Um, you want like 
one and a half to two cups of rice cauliflower, I would say. I'm not very precise on my measurements of things. So, you know, like a whopping bowl of mushrooms, one and a half to two carrots. Just wing it to, to however you like it. But anyway, rice cauliflower, you could also get, see it kind of looks like rice. It's kind of got a ricey texture. But um, you could also make this yourself. You could either pulse florets of cauliflower in a food processor, or you can grate it using a hand grater like I just used for the carrots, and it'll get a very similar texture. Um, you need a pretty big head of cauliflower though, because you're gonna need something to hang on to, because cauliflower breaks up really easy, so if you're using a hand grater, it can get really messy, and it can get a little dangerous. <laughs> so it is easier to use the uh, food processor if you're gonna make your own, but you know, frozen rice cauliflower is really good. I think there's nothing wrong with that. And it's easy, I mean, cut and dump. <laughs> Cause all it's in here is cauliflower, so. I think I should check before I say such things. Yeah, okay, there's also salt. So if you did it yourself, you wouldn't have salt. But the salt's uh, minimal. I mean, a cup of this has 70 milligrams. So it's pretty minimal. I kind of want to break it up in a bag because sometimes it chunks together. You know how frozen things do. So it doesn't come out in huge chunks like that. I mean, it'll break up when you're cooking it. Oh my god, it's so cold. See where Manly got me? A little jerk. <laughs> I don't like cauliflower. It's just Caucasian broccoli. <laughs> cauliflower is so versatile. Like, I'm always impressed with cauliflower for that is that it can be used for so much stuff. So I'm going to do that more than that, I think. I'm going to keep it. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. <laughs> but it can be used for so many things. Like, I'm amazed. Cauliflower is a staple if you're on a vegan diet because it can take on so many flavors and it can be used in place of ground meat in so many ways. And another one that's really good to have, too, for, like, ground meat replacements, so if you're first converting and you're like, wow, I really like ground beef and I don't have a way to get it. Um, red lentils can be used anywhere a recipe has ground beef. You can swap it for red lentils. So that's pretty cool. Alright, is this going to fit? Yay! We're using plastic bags because, you know, I really need to get some of those ones that are washable. The reusable, washable plastic freezer bags. Because I use so many of them. Nice to have. Okay, cauliflower is out. How do you like your cauliflower, Athlon? What's your way of enjoying it? I have it all over the kitchen now, along with my carrots. It's a mess in here. <laughs> this is an eggplant I used for my minestrone I made a couple days ago. And um, I just want to use up some of it. This half feels pretty dry because I cut it. So that half's no good. I'm going to try the other half. Cauliflower can be used for pizza crust. It can, yeah. I need to try that. I want to make a cauliflower pizza crust. I know you can buy them at the store, but I really want to make my own so it doesn't have salt in it. If I can avoid it. Um, this is just an eggplant, traditionally. What are you doing, cat? Yeah? Wanna tell us about it? Oh. Wanna say hi? Wanna say hi? Look. Say hi to everybody. This is Lexus. She's a, a Maine Coon, but I shave her so she doesn't have her huge mane. But she's still a fluff ball. <laughs> she weighs about 25 pounds. She's a big kitty. <laughs> you like my cauliflower at the store far away from me? Oh, you don't like it at all? Okay. I misunderstood. I thought you liked it. She's out of food, so that's probably her deal. You want some cat food? She does not eat vegan, by the way. She is a full-on carnival. Both the cats. There you go. There you go. She's like, that's not what I want. What are you making up there?
doesn't actually have a whole lot of flavor, like, by itself. I think that's what I like about it. It's like, it's kind of like plant-based chicken. <laughs> it could taste like whatever you want it to taste like. I think it's got so many ways you could make it, and it can just taste like a million different things. No? <laughs> I think it does, though. Okay, so for this, I've already washed this, by the way, because I used some of it. We're going to cut it into, like, thin rounds. And I'm going to cut off the first one because it's been exposed to the air, so you can see the difference in color. Like, it's messed up. So we're going to get rid of that first one. But we're going to cut it into rounds, and then I'm going to chop it into a really small dice. I think these are called something else in Europe. Eggplants. They have a different name. Like a croquette, I think. I want to say they call them croquettes. Croquettes versus eggplant. I could be wrong, but I think that's what they call them. All right, let's dice that much up and see what it, what it what it's like. You could actually just put some olive oil on these and grill them. They smell like pancakes when you grill them. <laughs> I think. Um, I don't know why. Eggplant. I haven't. I've been trying to eat eggplant. So I started eating Japanese eggplant and bibimbap, which is a Korean rice dish and thought it was pretty good, which I was surprised, because I don't like eggplant, so I'm trying to like eggplant. So I tried it that way, and I was like, oh, I like the Japanese eggplant, which is really weird. It's got a whole bunch of seeds in it, um, but you eat them. <laughs> and then these are traditional eggplant, which I really don't like, because they taste like pancakes, but in like a savory dish, and I think it's weird. So I've been trying to get used to pancakes. Thanks for that host, Hillian, how are you? All right, Athlon. So, uh, <laughs> Eggplant, when you cook it, it tastes or smells like a pancake, like pancake batter. It's so weird. And sometimes it's got like a really soggy texture because it really soaks up liquid. And uh, so I've been trying to find ways to eat it that I like it. And um, so I've been experimenting the last two weeks with eggplant. And uh, this is my third eggplant dish. So this week on Tuesday, I did a vegan minestrone, which I have recorded on YouTube. I just to edit it and upload it for you guys so you can learn to make it. But um, uh, it'll be one of those quick tip videos, just a few minutes to watch, to learn how to make a full recipe. But anyway, I made it in that, and it was really good. And so I think I'm starting to come around to eggplant slowly. <laughs> My bad, forgot I auto-hosted you. Oh, thanks! <laughs> I'm okay. Had a bad night on stream last night, though. Oh, I'm sorry. That sucks. A bad night, like your game wasn't working well, or tech issues. Never fun. I couldn't stream yesterday. I tried, but I was having tech issues of my own. So I'm kind of holding this together because I want to cut it the other way and I don't want to have to deal with separating it all. So I'm being kind of metic meticulous. So basically, we've cut it into wedges and now we've cut it long. So now we're going to twist it and cut it the other way and it's going to make it into a dice. So, see? Haha! Isn't that groovy? Kind of the same way you cut an onion. I don't think I want a ton of eggplant because I don't want like eggplant burritos. So we're just gonna go with a small amount. Rage issues? What were you playing? Woo! I lost my pile. It's gonna get hard here towards the end. Don't cut yourself. <laughs> Word of advice. Alright, so we got that's a pretty good size. This will cook down a little too, because it'll lose some of its moisture when we cook it. But it'll give it a nice texture and give it a little meatiness. That's kind of the cool thing about eggplant, is it does have kind of a meaty texture, similar to a mushroom if it's cooked right. If it's not, it's soggy and it's ugh, terrible, and it smells like a pancake. But if you don't, if you know how to do it, you know, or try it different ways, you might get lucky and like it. So we're going to hopefully like this. <laughs> This is a, a test, because normally I would add bell pepper here instead of eggplant. So if you don't like eggplant, if you're like me and you're like, I don't know about this eggplant lace, it seems a little weird, do a bell pepper. <laughs> and do a whole one. Just go for it. A whole bell pepper would be really good in this. Any color, it's fine. But you want to do a small dice, just like the eggplant. You could also use zucchini if you don't want to use eggplant. It would be the same. Or a yellow squash would also be good. Any of those options. Carry it away. My little carrot. Some garlic. I had this weird purple garlic I showed you guys during one of my last streams. All the garlic was purple, but now it's back to normal colors. Check that out. It's like a stem in the middle of the, the 
garlic head. Blackout Sora with my bestie. We both got super frustrated. <laughs> Were you playing a uh, blackout mode or multiplayer? I played last night. I was playing with one of my friends, um, Blue Steel, and I was playing with Cheesecake Noob and uh, some of those people. We were doing search, wrecking kids. It was fun. <laughs> As usual. <laughs> Almost requested a refund for your Black Ops 4. No way. It's like the best one in a long time. Were you just like having issues with spawn points or something? I know right now that's kind of a, the only issue with multiplayer that I've seen is the spawn points are a little bad. Some people think the weapons are unbalanced, blah, 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 but you know, that's pretty usual for a COD game. <laughs> so I think it all is fine. The only thing I think is OP is there's this dual wielding pistol build you can make and it just wrecks people. Oh my gosh, like it's a joke. It's like one guy's playing hardcore and it takes one hit to kill everybody and everybody else is playing core. So it's like multi-hits, it's so weird. But that's the only, the only thing I think is OP right now, and then the spawns are really bad on certain maps, like firing range. You can literally spawn facing someone on the other team like four feet in front of you. <laughs> so that could use some work, and that's in domination. I don't want to cut that on this because then my, my nightstand will smell like garlic. <laughs> the lag on Blackout. Blackout is a little laggy, I've noticed. That is true. Um, I get a little leg. It's not so bad. It's not like unplayable, but it definitely is a little leggy. So we're just gonna finally chop the garlic here. And uh, this is pretty fresh garlic, so I'm not worrying about pulling out the center of it. If you're using a little older garlic and it's got a green middle, you want to yank that out. That green middle of the garlic um, is really hard to digest, and so if you can, just pull it right out. Pops out pretty easy if you cut the clove in half. But we're just gonna this fresh. Just took the skin off and peeled and then chopped off the raggedy end and then we're just going to chop it up. And it's going to be delicious. It's going to be nutritious. Bum, ba, bum, 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 bum. Garlic has a lot of fit cancer fighting properties. It's really good for you. It's also really good for colds and stuff like to keep colds away. So this time of year load up on garlic and onions. Eat lots of them. Unless you're me and you're actually allergic, which I think I am, but I don't know. Not really, but it was a bother. Hang on. Okay. The, the leg was bothering you, is what you're saying? Okay, so what do I got here? I got all the filling, except for this stuff, which... I can do in just a second. So we're gonna make a little move here. I'm gonna pull out my cooktop so you guys can see. All right. So I got this new cooktop thing. I have two of them now. This one's different. The other one's really noisy, so I can only use the other one when I'm doing uh, YouTube videos. This one, where's the hookup? This one is quiet, so I can do it during live streams. And it's got a glass top, which is cool, so you can see through it. If, uh, you know, I need to put the lid on. Thank you, Greaseman, for the follow. How are you today? So this thing, it has like an actual temperature control. It's sort of for pancakes, I think, but I think you can use it for whatever. But it's kind of cool, it totally comes apart. So like, this thing comes off from the base, so you can wash it, which I thought was pretty neat. Usually you don't want it plugged in when you rip it apart like I just did, but and then they snap on. Groovy, eh? So anyway. <laughs> Let's see how far I can have this. Looks like I could have it there. You guys could still see. And my extension cord. I'm gonna get to cooking. Get to cooking. Alright, I gotta plug in more things. Such a fire hazard. this back over and 
done with the grater, so we don't need it. Close that. Okay. Onward. <laughs> okay, so we need to turn this thing on. And I wonder what temperature is like medium high. I wonder if it says. I wonder if it's like an oven, so like 350 is probably 350 is probably medium high. I'm gonna guess. I think I have a booklet. Let's look. For my other cooktop. And I think it says what temperatures are like medium. So 350 is a medium high. 400 is a high. Okay. So let's turn it down just a little. We'll do like 375. But a medium high heat if you're on the, the regular stovetop. We're learning stuff. <laughs> I haven't used this yet, so I'm, I'm excited to try it out. Excited. Can't wait to play Red Dead 2 tomorrow, something slow paced for once. I hear some people are pretty excited about Red Dead. Pretty excited. I am. Um, I don't play Red Dead. I know uh, some people get really into it, but I tried to play the first one and I couldn't get into it at all. So this is Dino Kale, and um, Dino Kale is easy to spot in your store. I like it better than regular kale. Regular kale is really like, I don't know, it doesn't have as good of a mouth texture. But Dino Kale has these bumps and it makes it look like a dinosaur skin, so it's really easy to spot. But it's a cruciferous vegetable, which makes it really good for you, super healthy. And uh, it's gonna go right into our meat today. Our meat, <laughs> in that it's not meat. We're not going to use too much of it. Two stocks is probably funny. You're pumped. Oh, it's off. Yeah, I, uh, I couldn't get into the first one. I was like, okay, so I rode my horse over here, and then I'm going to ride over there, and then I'm going to ride it back and forth as it came from. And I was like, I've been on a horse all day. Can't get out of the rain. It's so boring. <laughs> and then I tried it again like a month later, and I played it for four hours probably each time, and I was just like, Oh my god, I can't play this game. Like, I was hoping for a Skyrim, but it was not a Skyrim. <laughs> you don't like kale? A lot of people don't. It's either kale yeah or kale no. <laughs> it's. I think it's an acquired thing. Like, I don't know that I really like kale either, Jenny, to be honest. <laughs> but I find ways to put kale in things to where I don't mind it. Because I know how good it is for me. It's loaded with vitamin K and folate and uh, other B vitamins. Like, it's really good for you. Calcium, I think it even has. So we're just taking this giant stem out. This is getting hot, help, fast. We're like, ready to go. Okay. <laughs> Whew, it's hot. <laughs> you like kale? You hate sprouts, bean sprouts. Really? That's interesting. It got a few 10 of 10 reviews. I know it did, but I couldn't get into it. I really love bean sprouts, but I'm not super keen on kale. I'm still trying to get used to the kale situation. But I, ooh, hi. <laughs> but I really like bean sprouts. It's hard to find bean sprouts where I am, but I really love bean sprouts and microgreens and arugula. I really like a lot. What don't you like about the bean sprouts, Reese Moon? Brussels sprouts are good. Brussels sprouts are good, and they're in season right now. This is avocado oil we're going to be using. I'm going to mix it with a little olive oil, and we're going to use probably a large tablespoon total, and I'm mixing it with avoc or avocado oil and olive oil because avocado oil doesn't have a very high smoke point, so it'll burn if it's on a high heat, and then it won't taste good, but we want the flavor of the avocado oil, and the olive oil can be at a high smoke, so if we mix them together, good things will happen. So we're going to do a little bit of both, and this is like piping hot already. So we're going to go at it. We might need more olive oil in this, but I'm going to hope not because I don't like a lot of oil. I would rather eat a ton of spinach. I love spinach. I eat a ton of spinach. It's so good. So mushrooms in. Spinach is awesome. I have a green smoothie five days a week, so that's usually spinach. And sometimes I'll put some kale in it. If I know I'm not going to eat any kale like the rest of the day, I'll add some spinach in with the kale. Or kale in with the spinach, I guess it would be. But spinach is glorious. Spinach is really good because it's really mild, but you get that a lot of the similar minerals and vegetables. But it's lacking like vitamin K. Kale has that, which spinach does not. But spinach
spinach has a lot more protein. Spinach is a really good source of protein on a plant base. So you want to make sure not to crack your pan. So this is a pretty good size for what I'm doing. <laughs> Otherwise the mushrooms will get slimy and they'll steam versus brown. Bean sprouts taste bitter to me. I could see that. Sometimes they do. I think if you if you wash them really well, they have like a coating on them. And I don't know if you're like giving up on bean sprouts, but if you wash them really well, sometimes that coating will come off and then they don't have that. And the same thing's true with quinoa. Quinoa has a really bitter coating, so you have to wash them or soak them really well to get rid of that. And then they're really good. So maybe that's the issue. They like weren't washed well. So we're going to put in the carrots, mix it up. If you don't have a big thing like this, you want to use like a non-stick skillet. It's a really big non-stick. We're going to throw in the eggplant. You kind of want it all to go in because we're going to cook it down. And you kind of want it brown, kind of like meat, and the cauliflower. So eggplant, cauliflower, carrots, and mushroom. All in here. Yeah, bean sprouts I really like with the stir fries. I think bean sprouts are really good in that. It's kind of just like a crunchy bit you get, you know, with all the other stuff. I think it adds a nice texture. And I think that's where I like them. I think they're also good sometimes on sandwiches, but I don't eat a lot of bread, so sandwich is like a big treat for me. <laughs> so I usually only buy bean sprouts if I'm doing like a ramen or I'm doing a stir fry. And they're really good in those mediums. I've given up when I get to I get extra cabbage instead of bean sprouts. Well, there you go. At least you're getting something crunchy. That's kind of, you know, what it's good for. So as we suspected, I got cauliflower all over the place. So <laughs> let's get the rest of this cauliflower that's gone rogue off my cutting board and into the pot. <laughs> okay, back to the kale. But yeah, kale is really, I think kale's really bitter. So that's why I don't like it. Like I can't eat just like charred kale. My sister loves the stuff. She'll eat it like that. Me, I'm like, oh my god, no. <laughs> so I've been trying to find ways to kind of like hide the kale <laughs> in a sneaky way that you don't really know what's in there. And this is one of the ways I do it. So by putting the kale in this mixture, it can totally like sneak in there and you don't really notice it, but you get the benefits of it health-wise, which is cool. <laughs> it's kind of like a trick, you know how when you're cooking things for kids, like you'll make spaghetti sauce, but you'll add a bunch of carrots so the kids don't know that there's carrots in there and they're eating vegetables. This is one of those tricks, but for me. <laughs> the adult version. <laughs> Thanks for that host, Cupid. How are you guys? Nom 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 nom. So we got the stems out. You could skip the kale entirely in this if you're like, oh my god, lace. I don't think so. But um, I think the kale adds a nice element and you also get those benefits as time out. And you don't really notice it. I'll be honest, you don't. Um, there's not enough of it in there to notice and it kind of cooks down and gets soft and it kind of becomes a similar texture to spinach. So we're just slicing it and then going to go across it once just to kind of break it up a bit. We'll just reuse the same bowl here. Put it in there. We're not going to put it in yet. It's going to go in pretty far at the end. But if you don't like kale, you could add corn instead um, to this. It'd be good. Or you could use spinach. Spinach is really good in a burrito, or you could do cabbage. Cabbage would be a really good one. Either purple or green, either way. So you just want to make sure to stir this occasionally. It's going to take a while for this to cook down, more so than it normally would because of how finely we cut it. The mushrooms will take a while to release their moisture. And you want the mushrooms to release their moisture because otherwise you end up with like a slimy filling. So you can see how it's kind of going to take on that of a ground meat and we're going to add like salsa to it and seasoning and it's going to be really good. So just kind of spread it out and let it, you know, do its thing. We'll also add the garlic at some point as well. How's it going today, Cupid? Are you on 4 million cookies yet in cod? <laughs> you guys haven't had some water lately. Drink up. Okay, so we're also making a salad, so we're going to kind of multitask here at this point. So we're going to get a big bowl, and we're going to do a couple things. Um, I can get my lettuce. 
Alright, so when this starts to dry like this, I'm shedding. We're going to add our dry seasoning and our garlic. So we're going to put our garlic in. You don't want to add your garlic too soon because if you add your garlic really early, it'll burn. And I have pre made taco seasoning that I make from scratch, and I keep meaning to get this up on YouTube for you guys, but I promise I will do it. I just keep forgetting. But this is like a mix of cumin, chili powders, pepper, oregano that sort of thing. So I'm going to use a full tablespoon of this. And you can see it, it's got like red pepper flakes and stuff too. It's, it's pretty hot. We'll just do a little bit more. We're going to mix that up and see where we're at. You kind of want it to start to look like taco meat, you know. And this is what will give it that Mexican flair that we're after. And then it starts to smell a little so good. <laughs> There's also garlic powder in this, so if you're not super keen on garlic, I'd skip the fresh, but I think the fresh garlic kind of brings it to another level. So I'd recommend adding the fresh garlic. It makes it better. Okay. And then salsa. We're going to probably do like three tablespoons of this just to give it some heat and get it kind of moist. I know some people hate that word and I don't understand. <laughs> I think moist is a very valid word for so many things. So get over it. Because <laughs> I'm going to use it. <laughs> We're not 12. We can say the word moist. <laughs> okay, so now we're bringing some liquid back in. I know which seems redundant, but it's not. This kind of helps bind it too, the salsa. It'll kind of bind the stuff together, kind of like the fat wood in your meat. So you can see it kind of is doing something more like you would expect a filling to do at this point. But see how much it cooked down? This is what I was saying. You really got to go to town and use quite a bit of it. I might not have made enough, to be honest. Probably should have done more than this. We'll see if it stretches for the two nights like I was hoping and my lunch. I'm not sure that it will. We'll see. Okay, I need to get going on this. So this is fresh cilantro, and uh, the stems and the leaves are both equally good, so just go to town on it for this. Get out any, like, bits that are yellow or brown, because we don't want to eat that. This is older cilantro, so I'm going to toss it and get some good stuff. Cold mix. <laughs> cilantro usually lasts, or fresh cilantro usually lasts about a week in your fridge, and then you kind of want to be done with it. So I'm going to turn the heat off at this point. I can figure this thing out. Off, please. But it usually lasts around a week. Or until you eat it all, if you're like me. <laughs> so you just want to chop all this up. And because we're eating the stems too in this, because the stems actually have a lot of nutritional value, um, if you don't like the stems or the texture of them, you know, feel free to pick them out and just use the leaves. But I think they actually add a really good brightness, and that's kind of what the cilantro's purpose is here, is it kind of brightens up the whole thing. So just kind of chop it up pretty fine. And we're going to add a little bit to our salad, probably like a tablespoon. And then the rest to this. And this is done at the end when the heat's off because cilantro, you don't want to really like cook it down in it. You kind of want that brightness and the green color to stay, so you got to do it right at the end. And then we're going to probably transfer this actually to a different bowl so that it doesn't keep cooking on us. We don't want it to keep cooking. And there's already like pepper in the taco seasoning, so if you're wondering why I'm not like peppering it, that's why. We're not adding any salt. And then we're also going to add the kale. And the kale will kind of just steam down at this point a little bit because it's going to also cook in the burrito when we put the burritos in the oven when we actually reheat them. So the way these burritos work because we're kind of meal prepping them is you make the burrito and then put the sauce on and then it goes in the oven for a while. So you probably put your oven at like 350 and then let your, your burrito go for like a half hour uncovered with the sauce on and uh, the kale will kind of cook a little more in there too. So that's why you don't want to really cook it in here. You can see it kind of breaks down. Ooh, looks pretty, no? 
So that's our, our filling. We just need to get a big bowl to put it in. For a salad, it, you don't need to worry about the kale cooking down because if you were eating the salad normally with kale, you'd eat the kale raw. So this is just like a bonus that it's cooked a little. If you have a hard time digesting um, cruciferous vegetables, cabbage or kale, cooking it will help it break down some of those enzymes that make it hard for you to digest too. Or also adding a probiotic into your diet can help you digest those things better. So if you're first or new to a vegan diet, you probably are going to have stomach troubles for at least a couple weeks while your body gets used to all the fiber because you're upping your fiber intake so high. But you'll regulate out after a while and then you won't have to worry about it. But in the beginning, a probiotic can really help a lot. So you don't have to suffer. <laughs> you'll also find you make more trips to the restroom. Fun story. Yeah, you end up needing to pee a whole lot more when you're on a plant-based diet. Like an old lady on a road trip. Can we stop at the next restaurant? I need to pee again. <laughs> so that's our mix. Looks pretty good. Okay, we're gonna get this out of the way. Can I unplug it? Not take everything with me. All right. Let me bring this back. Oh, my towel just slid out from underneath it. Are we on camera still? Okay. Alright, so that's our filling. We got this going. We got our cilantro already in it. and it also adds a little salt, and that's the only salt that's going to be in there. So it kind of adds a nice little something to your salad. But you can skip it if you want. I don't do it all the time, just because I don't want the extra, you know, junk that's in a processed chip, but occasionally it's pretty good. And then we're going to put a tablespoon of salsa on the salad. Almost got a salsa, guys. We're doing pretty good goal of the week always is to run out of stuff by the weekend because then we go shopping again on Sunday. So it's good that we're running out of stuff because that means we've used it all. We used all the stuff. All right, then we need an avocado and a lime and a lemon for this. This avocado's got kind of a gnarly bit. All right, we're going to set the salad off to the side for a minute because we're going to actually start working on assembling our burritos. So that's just going to chill for a while. And we need a container. <coughs> Can't stop sneezing today. <laughs> Pop the lids off. they pop back in easy enough so it's not a big deal these are a pretty good deal though these containers I got these on Amazon and I got five for 25 bucks and if you buy them at like the grocery store they're like 14 bucks each so <laughs> definitely if you're looking for meal prep containers these are glass so they can go right in the oven the dishwasher fridge freezer all that safe um, but if you're if you're not wanting to deal with having to transfer stuff better than to get glass than plastic, I think. All right, so we're gonna try to do two at a time, so they're kind of similar. So we got two burrito shells. We're gonna get a different spoon. All right, 
I'm just going to kind of portion this out into a burrito. So you can make like really fat burritos, or you could do smaller ones. But I'm going to do kind of like medium size, and then I'm going to serve this with a huge salad. So the burrito is going to be kind of big, but not like restaurant big, because I'm going to have a big salad with it on dinner time. So we're going to serve it with like avocado, cabbage, and lettuce, and tomato. It'll be really good. So about like that is what we're looking for. So it's going to be pretty large. The other one. And hopefully, if all goes as planned, they fit in my container. Because <laughs> I've had that problem before, where I make them too long and they don't fit in. So hopefully, I can get them to fit. But you want them similar size because you're going to eat these together, you know? So I'm hoping these will go to four nights. I need to blow my nose. I'm all snuffled. Are you meal prepping? I am, Jenny, yeah. So I'm meal prepping these for two nights dinner. So we'll eat them tonight and uh, probably tomorrow night. And then I'm having a salad for lunch today. So yeah, it's gonna be meal prep. So you just flip it over and then you kinda wanna squish it back on itself and then fold the sides and roll and then just tuck in the ends as you go. And so that's a burrito. These are really good too if you freeze them. You can do like freezer burritos. So you could wrap that in aluminum foil and you'd have like a freezer burrito ready to eat instead of a wet burrito. It'd be really good. Either way. Welcome back, Athlon. Okay, let's see if they fit. Oh, we're gonna make it fit. <laughs> it's a little wide. I think this end just came undone. Might be my problem. It's a little long. Okay. They fit-ish. They fit well enough. two more. So that's a dinner for Daniel and me and then we'll have like I said a big salad on the side. And we'll get the sauce on top here too because we're doing easy sauce today. I don't have to make it. It's just pop it open a can. You could use whatever sauce you'd like for this but I really think the verde sauce is, is better. So those were too long so I'm gonna make this a little shorter and fatter and see if it fits in my thing a little better. Hey, Angel Lizard, what's up? How are you? How is your art coming along? What are you working on drawing here lately? Anything fun? Angel Lizard does really awesome art, guys, if you haven't checked her out. Um, she is a really talented artist. She's done art for me in the past because she was so kind to do so for no reason at all. And um, yeah, I used some of her stuff for a long time on my stream. So if you're ever wanting to see some cool things. She doesn't take commissions anymore. I don't know if she ever did, actually. <laughs> but she does really good stuff. Okay, these look about even. Maybe load that one a little more. We'll make one fatter version. <laughs> okay, and that should be the rest for our salad. So flip fast, flip with confidence. So when you roll, they stay in the burrito. And you want to make sure these are tight, like that's, that's really important when you're making a burrito. If you don't roll it tight, it's going to just come unrolled on you. And it won't cook very well, and just weird things happen. You got to you gotta make sure to like yank at it, you know. Get up in that burrito and wrap it. <laughs> I'm good, I just woke up from a nap. No art, just work. Oh, too bad. I finally got a couple days off. I did before I started working in the medical field. It was my side and sole income for about two years. Oh, awesome. Okay, I seem to remember that, yeah. You're uh, doing nursing now, is that right? I can't recall. It's been so long since we've caught up. I think you were doing nursing. Those fit much better than the first two. See, we did a better job. More appropriately sized for our good vessels. <laughs> okay, for our sauce. We're gonna use green canned sauce and the ingredients are tomatillos, chili peppers, onions, salt. 
cilantro. All vegan things. So does this totally good. But it's just plain green verde sauce. And like I said, you know, I could get some of you. I'd probably make this myself. But tis not the correct season. And you're gonna actually use quite a bit of this. I might use this whole can on one, I'm not sure. We'll see. This is a uh, seven ounces. You gotta show the burrito you're the boss. You do, you really do. You gotta put the burrito, you know, make sure it knows. Like, it's gonna do what you tell it to do. Otherwise you'll have sad burritos in the end. It'll just fall apart on you too. Like when you're eating them, especially if you're doing a freezer burrito, don't wanna deal with that. Medical assisting mini nurse essentially. I can do everything a nurse can. Sans, start an IV and catheter a child. Oh, okay, that's pretty cool. So if we need saving, we know who to call. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna use half a can for each, it looks like. You just wanna smother them. Like, when you're making a wet burrito, smothering is key. <laughs> uh, if you don't, they'll burn in the oven and they won't stay as moist as you'd like them to. So smother away. And then you can just use your spoon. Sorry for your ears. Use your spoon to make sure it gets all the way to the edge. And it's gonna kind of pool in the middle and that's okay. But when it cooks in the oven, it'll kind of like boil up and get all glorious. You'll know it's hot. Hot, 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 hot. Oh, it smells good. Smells good. All right. I mean, tomato. Tomato, tomato. I got a giant beef steak tomato. I'm going to wash it. Gently. Tomato is a gentle thing. Can't handle the pressure. Be nice to your tomatoes. Alright, we're gonna make some room. <laughs> I wish the lighting was better in here. The lighting to me looks so different than it looks on stream. I wish it was better. I need like a bunch of box lamps, but it's such a pain in the ass to already set up stream in the kitchen. Like I have so much stuff everywhere and cables. Just make it worse. <laughs> so we're gonna slice it in half. And we're going to cut out the end by like doing a triangle bit. Watch your fingers, but you don't want the stem of your tomato, so just cut it out. Because, I don't know about you, but I hate when you're at a restaurant and you get this part of the tomato like in your salad or something, or on your sandwich, and you're like, seriously? Like you didn't cut this out? Like who wants to eat that? Nobody. <laughs> Nobody wants to eat that. Alright, so then we're just going to cut it again, and we're going to do kind of like, um, round moonish shapes, half moons, so like wedges, I guess. Wedges would probably be appropriate word for these. And we're gonna just kind of lay them on top. So this will be really good. It actually will get kind of like caramelized and stuff when you're cooking it, and it'll be good. But I think it adds something, having the red. It's kind of like when you have just red sauce versus having a little white sauce with your red sauce, like at an Italian restaurant. So my stem is still in here, so we're gonna cut that out. But I think it makes a difference. So three per. Darn, I was hoping we wouldn't have to cut into this other tomato so I could use it for something else. But I guess not. All right. Tomato, tomato. Okay. Glorious. And I think I'll actually, you know, since we have this out and all, I don't like the seeds in a tomato on fresh stuff. Like if I'm eating it raw, I don't like the seedy bit. So we're gonna just cut it out. But then I'm gonna put this in my salad. Little fresh tomato. Lord, quick wipe because tomatoes are messy. Get all the juice and seeds on everything. Plus, it makes it kind of dangerous when you're cutting stuff because it's so slippery. So you kind of want to get it up. Because if you have to cut anything else, it'll be a disaster.
Phillips Wizard. You're helping people every day. That's pretty awesome. That's probably a pretty rewarding job. What, do you work in like an ER or something? If you don't want to say, that's fine too. All right, so we're gonna save the other half of a tomato. You do not want to store a tomato in the fridge. It gets really mealy and gross. So just leave it on your counter, but wrapped in plastic, and it'll last for about a day. Don't put your tomatoes in the fridge, please. Please, for your tomato's sake. Okay, so that is our wet burritos. And to reheat these, you put them in the oven at 350 degrees for 30 minutes, uncovered, just like they are, just in the oven. Good to go. You always make such good food. I love you in your kitchen, by the way. I haven't been able to watch you live for a while. Yeah, well, I just returned to Twitch, too, so I'm here to stay. So hopefully you'll catch more of me. And thank you. Appreciate it. I'm glad to see you again as well. <laughs> it's been a long time. I work in a pediatric urgent care. Aw, little kids. That's pretty cool. Good for you. If people, come, if people come to Florida Nightlife Pediatrics, it's where it's at. I work for them. Oh, okay. So if we ever need some pediatric care, we can come uh, ask for solicitor, and they'll be like, who? <laughs> or they know your, your other name. So we're just cutting this avocado in half. This is a huge avocado, by the way. Monstrous. So we're only going to eat half of it. Save the other half for uh, dinner. And um, way to save your avocados, which I've talked about this a lot because it's an ingenious little trick. It takes a little lemon juice, and I just buy it in the bottle, lemon juice, for this use only. This is the only thing I use it for. But you just squirt some lemon juice on top of your avocado, and then use your finger to rub it around. And I'm going to do it over the sink because it gets kind of messy. But um, rub all the flesh, including the seed, but really just cover the whole thing off any of the excess and then you're going to wrap it really gently but push the plastic like onto the edge so I'll move this over here so you can see what I'm doing so you want to wrap it so it's pretty tight around the whole thing because the, the thing with avocados is air is the enemy and if you do this the lemon juice will help keep it preserved and it'll go from being really black and you can keep this for a day in your fridge so you could eat this tomorrow and it'd be still awesome. You just want to scrape off the very top bit. It's going to turn colors. It will not be as pretty as it is now. But the bottom underneath, once you scrape it off, will be just as fine. So that's how you can save avocados. Pretty cool trick because avocados are expensive and, you know, you don't want to waste them. They're so good. All right. So now we're just going to make cubes with our avocado today because I'm feeling lazy. So we're just going to cut one way and cut the other, not going through the skin all the way. And you want to hold the avocado slightly off your hand so there's a gap so you don't cut your fingers. And then we're going to cut it in half. And then you can like peel the skin off and it'll come off into your bowl in chunks. Cubed and ready to go. Pretty awesome, huh? <laughs> you can do this if you want to do slices too. But this is like the, I don't care how it looks, I just want to eat it situation. So, <laughs> cubes is my, I just want to eat way of doing it. If you wanted it pretty, I would slice it and make it like a fan or make a flower or do something nice. But if you're just like, I'm hungry, just get it out of the shell and eat it. <laughs> just eat it, eat it. What's that text message? Happening phone. Not cooperating. Oh well, I'll worry about it later. <laughs> okay, so then, oh, we need this. So we need half a lime. This is our dressing, by the way. It's avocado and citrus. And I've tried so many different salad dressings and vegan dressings, it's stupid. And honestly, the best I've had is just fresh citrus juice and avocado. Um, so I don't buy dressings anymore. Um, the only other dressing I eat is one that I make, and it's a vegan um, Thousand Island, which I really like. So 
So I pulled out the seeds of the lemon and we're just gonna hold it upright and squeeze over the avocado and the lettuce and that's gonna give us our moisture in our salad and act as our dressing. And then the lime, which will give it a little zesty kick. And it's a stubborn one, so no seeds to worry about in this guy. So you can just kind of squeeze it as best you can. And I hope you work out. <laughs> Cause wow. <laughs> Limes can be stubborn, for sure. That one especially is like, nope, I don't want to be juice. I like to be a lime. And then you can wrap these in plastic, and they'll save in your fridge for two or three days. So I'll probably eat the other half tonight with dinner, because I'll probably put it over our big salad we have on the side of our burritos. So they'll get eaten tonight. I always have so many like halves and things wrapped in plastic in my fridge. It's stupid. <laughs> okay, then for the topping, which is the rest of our mix, and it's cooled down a bit, but it's still gonna be just as good. Right on top. And now you have lunch for today and vegan dinners for a couple nights all ready to go. How groovy is that? Woo! <laughs> so that's today's dish, and uh, we just knocked out two nights of dinners for two people. So four dinners if you were single, or one dinner for a family of four, and lunch in one go. And you know, how long were we up? Let's see. What time? So an hour and a half. Two nights of dinner. Done. Lunch. Done. Meal prep. Love it. <laughs> so thank you guys for hanging out today. I had a really good time. And if you're not following the channel, be sure to hit that follow button so you can catch me live next time. I'm not on a schedule, so I just kind of pop up and I usually post on Twitter before I go live and in my Discord. So if you're not following me in those places, Twitter at Red Lace Gaming. And Discord link is, uh, I think, down below in the description. Um, or you can grab them here in those places. So I hope you connect with me and uh, hope to see you around. Thanks for hanging out today and uh, also subscribe to me on YouTube at Red Lace Gaming where I upload videos and tutorials on how to cook stuff in quick bite-sized bits as well as live stream highlights. So if you missed it, you can catch the whole screen there so you can know how to make something. And uh, I also do gaming stuff as well, so lots of game tutorials and so forth. But uh, I'm going to see if there's someone on. Um, looks like a vegan space fan from Power Up is on, so if you guys want to stick around, uh, we can go raid him like and uh, um, we'll rate him with hashtag nom if you guys want to do that yeah stream is ending <laughs> for today so if you want to stick around and raid vegan space fan he's a teammate of mine also fellow vegan so uh, if you guys want to let's hang out and go do that so have a good one stopping by hopefully I'll uh, I'll see you next time thank you so much for coming by today it's been forever since we've chatted hopefully we can catch up soon <laughs> bye guys have a good one